I have a project going and you can see I have several quilt groups here. I have the edge to edge repeat patterns and I have a point to point stuff and then I have this quilt group called wings. Now right now I have all of these patterns quilted in these they're four inches wide up here and then when they get down to the very end they're about three quarters of an inch to an inch wide. These are, this is a pattern that I made up myself in Auto Sketch. this pattern and then a pattern here. This area separates the upper wing from the lower wing and then this these two separate the left side from the right side and the same up here in this area. The butterfly body is right there in that. Right now I am going back and I'm filling in along the sides of this circle. This is a 49 and a half inch circle and I'm filling in the sides with this butterfly pattern and I'm using divide instead of uh, trim or fill. And right now I'm quilting around that circle. I'm stitching around this circle. There's a about a half inch wide all the way around this circle. It's about a half inch wide a uh, little piece of material and I'm, sew I'm sewing outside the circle and inside the circle. So I'm going to go to P to P and I'm going to select a P to P line and I'll make sure that that is set for line which it is and then I'll just click on this icon. I use the P to P line and this is the very bottom center of that circle and I want to quilt from where I left off the last time down to that point. I use P to P line and you say well this looks a little crazy because you didn't follow the the circle. I clicked this point and then this point and I hit stop. Then I clicked again and I clicked this point and I click stop. I did that for a reason. I could have clicked this point, this point, and this point and then click stop. But the way I did it, these are actual individual segments. I did that for a reason. I'm going to click on, I'm going to press Alt and A, and I want my end snap turned on. I'm going to click on the end snap down here, and then when I go up to this point where it starts, it's actually going to snap to that point then when I go to this point it's going to snap to it. If I would have clicked where it says start and then this point and then the end point without hitting stop it would have not been two segments and it would not snap to this end point. So I'll just click that then I'm going to go and click there when it end snaps I'm going to exit out of all of that. I'm going to delete this and delete this one. Now I have a stitchable pattern that is right along the edge of that circle. Down here my needle is on and I'm going to turn the needle off then I'm going to go to quilt and I'm going to check this to see if it is in fact going to sew next to the circle. Okay, it's moving right along the edge of that circle and I'm watching it and yes it's close enough and it's going to quilt the way I want it to. I use the same idea for the inner edge of this circle. I, I click this point and this point and hit stop then I click this point and this point and hit stop. Then I I still have my end snap turned on. 
and I used Alt A and I let it snap to this po start point and then I clicked this point and it will snap because these are end points snapped it there click that then clicked again and then clicked here and when I do that it gives me this nice smooth arc now I can go and delete these P2P lines because I'm not going to sew those now I have my inner circle area to stitch the left side of this circle is inside and outside has been sewn. Now I have to go and do the right side, inside and outside. 